Welcome back to my messy workbench. Today I'm going to talk about transistorized voltage regulators and ripple filters. If you work on a lot of vintage electronics like old stereo receivers, things like that, you will see this circuit. Now a lot of times they've moved to um, the uh, integrated circuit type regulators. You'll see those often, but still you, you do see this type of circuit quite a bit. Now not to confuse you, but it's often laid out this way in the schematic, kind of horizontal layout, because you have the supply input on this side and the regulated output on this side. This is your load and the elements of the regulator here. You might see additional components for better component or better performance of the circuit. But you know, th this is its simplest form, and we'll just use that because it makes it easier to understand. I laid it out vertically here. It's the same exact circuit. I just think it's easier to understand this way because you have your zero potential here, your supply voltage here, and you know the decreasing potential as you go through the components in the circuit. And uh, look at how it works. It's not, not always apparent how the thing actually works. Well, to make this thing work, you need some sort of voltage reference. And that's the Zener diode. Well, if you're familiar with the Zener diode, you know that it's set up reverse bias and it has a certain voltage where it starts conducting. Well, for this video, I'll just say this is five volts. And you need to put some current through it. So we have a biasing resistor up here and again, this is our supply voltage. So we'll say this is 4 volts now. So no current's going to flow because it's below its conducting voltage. Now it hits 5 volts and current begins to flow because that's the voltage the diode, the Zener diode starts conducting. Now as this goes higher, say like 6 volts or more, we have this current limiting element here and because this is set for 5 volts it's going to keep this voltage potential at this point at 5 volts. So the voltage drop will develop across this resistor here. Now if your load it's only going to draw a very small amount of current, you know, a few microamps up to a few milliamps. You can use the Zener circuit on its own. You just connect the load between the resistor and the Zener, and it will regulate the voltage for you. Now, if you need more power or uh, current, you're going to have to put an amplifying device in that circuit to make it work. So we add a transistor. So what happens is you connect the transistor base between the resistor and the Zener and you put the load in the emitter circuit and the collector is connected direct to the supply. This type of circuit is called a common collector amplifier circuit and we have to do that for couple reasons. One, the voltage gain of such a circuit is one because you know we have five volts in we want our five volts out. Now at this point I will say there is that diode junction, the base to emitter diode junction which causes a 0.7 volt drop in a silicon transistor but for simplicity we'll, we won't worry about that but just keep that in mind. So yeah, we want a circuit with no voltage gain so we get the same voltage out that we're putting into the base. But we do want current gain and the common collector type circuit is just what we need. It, it has current gain and no voltage gain. So how does the circuit actually regulate under varying conditions or what's known as dynamic conditions? You know, as the load 
draws more current. I don't see any sensing device telling the transistor to adjust. You know, all we have here is just the load connected to the emitter. Well, how it actually works is through a function called negative feedback. So you have to look at the circuit as kind of a potential ladder as we go up from the bottom to the full supply voltage. The transistor is sitting atop this load and we have a constant voltage out here. But as the load increases, you know, it draws more current, think of it as a resistor that's lowering in value. It's going to want to cause this voltage to drop. You know, it's going to draw more current. It's going to want this voltage to drop. So what happens is, since the transistor sits atop this load, this drawing more current is going to cause this voltage try to become lower here. So more current is going to divert through the base emitter junction. When that happens, the transistor is biased more, it turns on more, and counteracts that, and the voltage remains the same. And conversely, if the load draws less, and the voltage is going to want to go higher, but when it goes higher, the transistor draws less current through the base, and it counteracts that as well. So, yeah, pretty neat how that works with negative feedback. So how does it work if the supply voltage increases? Same thing. Now if you have more voltage coming through, let's say you have a given resistance, more voltage means more current through the resistor. What happens? The voltage drop across that resistance wants to increase. So again, now at this point, the voltage wants to increase. Well, this circuit over here is going to push less current through, counteracting that, and the output voltage stays the same. Just a thing of beauty, isn't it? How that works. Okay, let's take a look at the ripple filter circuit. Very similar to the voltage regulator, except we've removed the Zener diode and replaced it with a capacitor. So what goes on here is this capacitor charges up to close to the supply voltage. And we have our load connected out here. And you have your supply voltage coming in, it comes off the rectifiers, filter capacitors, but still there's going to be a little bit of ripple. In some circuits like class A preamp circuits, you don't want you know your supply ripple getting into that because it goes on to the output of the uh, amplifier and you get hum in your output. So this circuit, all it does is feed a smooth DC into the base of the transistor and the negative feedback effect counters any of that ripple that's coming in from the supply and makes it nice and flat. Now it does have one problem. It's not a regulator. You know, a regulator works until you know the supply voltage drops to its dropout level of the regulator, which in this case would be around a volt or so more than the uh, Zener voltage. But in this case we just have a capacitor and this outputs usually a, around a volt less than the input. So if you have a sag on your supply voltage what happens it drops below this you know the, the capacitor's voltage and hum will go through the circuit because this is not filtering anymore. And a good example of that problem is my realistic Radio Shack brand Phono Preamp. This I got many years ago in the 80s. Here's the schematic diagram and there is, I don't know if I can get focused that close, but there you see it's kind of backwards from my uh, schematic, but uh, there it is. It's a ripple filter right there. The problem I have with this thing is when the air conditioner turns on, it 
drops the AC line voltage quite a bit. You know, just when the uh, compressor motor gets started, it draws a heavy current. And it drops the voltage, and I get, for like a, you know, fraction of a second, I get like a hmm sound. And it's very annoying when I'm digitizing my vinyl collection. I'll get that sound in my, you know, my file. And it sounds like crap, and it's annoying. So I need to mod this thing. And, uh... See if I can take care of that problem. Okay, let's take a look at an actual voltage regulator circuit in action. Now you'll notice there's an LED here. Instead of using a Zener diode, I decided to go with an LED. It's a white LED that at lower current it starts to turn on just below 3 volts. Not as good as a Zener diode because as the current increases the voltage does go up a little bit in the LED, so you know it's not a perfect regulating reference. And I just have a resistor as a load. The yellow channel of the oscilloscope is connected to the supply voltage, and the blue channel, which is 2, is connected to the output of the regulator. So I turn on the supply, and start bringing up the voltage until we hit the uh, 0.7 volts on the transistor it won't conduct yet see it starts when we hit that around 0.7 you can see the blue start coming up and it will trail behind the the raising rising supply voltage and once we hit the voltage of that LED it turns on See, it turns on there around, uh, well, the output would be 2 volts. It's, it'd actually be around 2.5 volts or so for the LED. You can see it's turning on there. Now we have regulation. As I increase the voltage, you know, up and down, you see the output stays steady. Now you do see a little bit of wiggle there because like I said the LED is not a very good element because it the current does change its uh, forward voltage a bit as it goes up and down see that but it is regulating pretty well okay well that's about it thanks again for watching